Hi, my name is Jaquette Dumas, and I'm so excited to be able to share with you all today. Let's jump right into it. Now, this is not an adorable picture that makes me think of happy times, but this is a picture that is probably about 20 years old that I am sharing with you, and this is a picture of me. Can you guess which one is me? <laughs> I am definitely standing here full of optimism. This picture was drawn of me and one of my colleagues by a student. And this was a time where I felt full of hope, full of ambition, and I started my first year teaching. I'll tell you what, that feeling did not last long. At the end of that school year, I realized that I had failed my students miserably. And I'm sure you're thinking, oh, come on, it probably wasn't that bad. You probably did okay, you were a first year teacher. No, I'm talking, failed them miserably. I got to the end of the school year that the student has represented here, and at the end of the year, I realized that my African American students had not done very well. Um, not done poorly, but failed in my opinion failed because they were feeding into the statistics that we were seeing at the time in education. And I realized that all of that ambition, all of that hope, all of those well wishes were wasted in a year full of good intentions rather than intentional decisions. Have you ever failed at something? How did it feel when you failed miserably? How did it feel what did it look like to rethink your decisions? What did it look like to rethink your steps? Well, that was me. That was me thinking about how could I be an African-American teacher and present and spend a year with students and at the end, they not be successful. I'm African-American. How could this happen? But I realized that it's not just about good intentions. It's not about ambition, it's not about hope. It is about making a series of decisions and watching those decisions make change in our community. Now, I like math and I know, I know, don't, you know, don't hate me for liking math. I love math actually. I want you to take a look at this problem. I want you to solve this problem if you can. So you got three numbers here. It's not a trick answer. Um, yes, they're going in descending order but these numbers represent much more than a simple math problem or a brain bender. These numbers represent a plight of a community. 45, 45 years of stalled progress in education. 45 years of educators attempting to change the trajectory of our African-American students. 45 years of attempting to close an achievement gap. 45 years of reform, 45 years of superintendents, 45 years of parents, 45 years of changes, 45 years of legislation, 45 years where we attempted to rectify for a group of students the education that they so well deserve. 45 years, 15. 15 represents the percent of African-American students who are proficient in reading, proficient or above, that's the number combined, 15%. Yeah, you did your math right. That means that 85% of our African-American students, they read below grade level, many far below grade level. I think you're kind of getting the sense that this is not your do now or your seat bell work when you come into your math class. Eight. Eight represents the number of African-American male students who drop out of school. These are the numbers. These are the facts. These are the representation of our students who we have failed miserably. And I don't say this to point you out. I say this to point myself out. I say this to point out our community. We are in a state of emergency. 
and what happens in a state of emergency. There must be a response in a state of emergency. Imagine, imagine a student. Imagine a student who grows up in a single parent home, qualifies for free and reduced lunch. Imagine a student who attends a school with very limited resources. Imagine a student that by the time that student hit 10th grade, that student went to a school where the school simply ran out of math classes. There were such little resources available for that student that there were no longer any classes for mathematics. Yes, that means they could not meet their A through G requirements on campus at that school. Imagine a student who looks around campus and the best role model they could find was a sprinkle of teachers, a handful of teachers aides, and some support staff that they saw on occasion, but no role models in administration and even the role models on campus that were teachers, it was hit or miss whether that teacher would actually be matched with that student. Imagine a student who attends an AP English class and that teacher of that AP English class tells that student, you are not qualified to be in this class. There's no amount of work that you could do that could make you qualify to write well enough to be successful in this class. I'm not going to make you imagine anymore. You are looking at that said student. I am the statistics of what has been written about our African-American student. The problem is that there is a difference that can be made. I am living the difference and my community made the difference. I am not that inherently smart. <laughs> I was not raised in a family that knew everything to do. I was not given the rules or the guidelines of how to overcome the plight of what I was dealt with, but I was blessed with a community. And the community around me, they pushed me to be. And I'm not talking about my African-American community because for many, they may think, wow, that's awesome. Her immediate community rallied around her. No, it was not African-American community. It was a diverse community, a diverse community of people who pushed me to be, and they made the difference. It was a diverse community of people, different ages, different racial backgrounds, and really different platforms. All of the people who are in this community did not exist just in my school. They existed in my neighborhood. They existed in my church. They existed between the kind words of a grocer who saw me counting the items in the basket and trying to race my mom to figure out the bill so that I could get the quarter or some of the change that was left over and that grocer encouraging me that I was almost there. It came from a full 360 degree community that pushed me to be and eliminated the statistics that tried to dictate what my future would be. And with that difference and pushing me to be, they also believed. Belief is a powerful thing. Belief can change the trajectory of anything that you're facing in life. Belief. Belief will cause you to change the deficit thinking when it comes to our African-American community and our African-American students. That belief is going to be the difference when we cause this rallying around of those who are in need the most. That belief is going to change the understanding or the common belief that African-American parents do not show up because they do not care. The belief is that our African-American parents while they may not know what to do, they do care. The belief has to change into the mindset of really thinking about this idea that not only can students achieve, but are black students 
will achieve. And that simple shift in mindset makes the difference. Yeah, here I am with the numbers again. 4,120, those are my kids. You're looking at me, you're making some calculations. You're thinking 10 months, how old could she be? I know, <laughs> it happens. I talk about my kids like they're my kids because they're my kids. Now I've only birthed six in the natural, it's true. Um, but all 4,120 students that have come through my doors as a classroom teacher and as an administrator, they are my students. 18,000, that's approximately the amount of students that I've touched through teaching teachers and they are my students. 7.7 .7 million, that's how many African American students we have in the US and they are my students. What do you mean? Okay, I know you kind of were with me at first, right? With the 4,000, but all of these students, they're not just my students, but they are our students. They belong to our communities. They belong to our future. When we think about responsibility, it can be daunting, but our future is defined by our response to today's problems. And the way that we respond, whether we respond well or whether we do not respond well, it is our ability to respond that will define where we are going. It will define the breakthroughs in science. It will define how we overcome the social ills and social problems. And so that's why I propose to you that those 7.7 .7 million, they're not my students. They're not just my students. They are not the problem of the African-American community. They're not even the problem of our current education system. They are not the problem of the local poor school down the street. They are our shared issue. They are our students. They are our future. They are our success. They are the ones who we are depending on to look at how we will thrive. And so when we take on this shared responsibility, it's not a burden, but it's an opportunity for us to rally together and become a powerful community. When we look at this responsibility, I'm asking you to do three things. I'm asking you to show up. I'm asking you to speak up. I'm asking you to pay up. They are our black students. They don't belong to one lane of people, but they belong to all of us. When we look at the 45 years and the plight of what we've seen, it has to be more than one group of society to show up. What does showing up look like? Show up as a mentor, show up as an organization, show up and be there when people are rallying around education and policies, show up. Show up in your vote and then show up with your voice. Speak up, speak up about the social ills and the injustice that you're observing. We need more than a social media post. We need more than this feeling of empathy that overwhelms us when we see these numbers or when we even hear a TEDx talk on it. We need more than this feeling and emotion that goes absolutely nowhere. We need for that emotion to turn into your voice to cry out loud against what you see, against the trends, ask the hard questions, Ask why the lack of diversity in administration. Ask why the lack of progress in your community. Ask why. Ask where the dollars are going when we look at community organizations and programs. And speaking of that, pay up. Take your resources and put them where it counts. Maybe you don't know where to put the resources. Do the research and put in your time resources. Put in your money. As a community, we have a responsibility, and this responsibility is not to the children you birthed, not to the children that go to the school that your children happen to go to, not to the school up to the street, but all of our students, our black students, our future, our community.